All right, everybody. Let's see what we can do right here. Turn that off, go like this. How's everyone going today? How's it going? How's it going? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being here. And let's see what we can do with this gorgeous little clock. All right now, this will be the first YouTube tutorial that's a full length, step by step clock painting, right? Fully dry piece of wood. All I did was drill the hole in the middle of it with a 3 8 inch drill bit, and then I screwed it to the, the center piece of wood on my easel, and that way it won't turn and it won't wobble back and forth. If you just tried to push it down and clamp it in like this, trust me, it wobbles. I tried it. So, just gotta screw it in right to the thing. You're already gonna have a hole in the center of it anyway, and then we're gonna use one little piece of a clock. It's gonna look just like this, All right? Got it over at Michael's. It's the longest one you can get. It sticks out the furthest. Right, and then it's about, I don't know, about a half inch on the back. It's got these real long clock hands, and it's gonna be very cool and very easy. We're gonna do it all within an hour, if you can believe that. If you can believe that it can be done in one hour, then hang out and stay here. Now, this little uh, clock is gonna be unfinished in the sky. I really like that look from the other night, and so I figured I would do a tutorial for you guys on how to do it. And of course, I'm never ready, so I've got to get all prepped, get my tape down and all that stuff. So while I'm doing all this, you tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? You've got to let me know in the comments. You've got to let me know in the comments, you guys. Now, all I'm going to do with our dry piece of wood is take our Bob Ross Liquid Clear, right, and apply it to this piece of wood and then wipe off the excess. That's all we're going to do. So. Here you can see the, the jar is about that empty, so we're gonna go in like this, right down inside, grab a little bit of the of the liquid clear, just a touch. Don't need too much of it. All right? A little bit. Now we're gonna just put a little bit up here, a little bit down there, a little bit over here, then over there, and start to stretch it back and forth until it's everywhere across our canvas. Uh, well, our piece of wood, this clock, whatever we're gonna call it. It's a canvas to me. <laughs> so all we gotta do is stretch it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and make sure we get the entire thing covered. Now, being wood, it's going to soak up the liquid clear very, very fast. Very fast going to soak it up. So, once we get it on there, by the time that we get done, we're going to be able to literally grab it right here and it's already going to be dry in the sky. So don't worry about that. Very quickly, they absorb into this wood and it helps the painting on there dry much, much, much faster. So tell me where you guys are watching from. What's your favorite sandwiches? And uh, this one's going to be a lot of fun, guys. Just a whole lot of fun. All right. Hang on one second. <clears throat> right on. Now. If you're watching over on YouTube, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you're watching over on Facebook, you got to pull up those little emojis and tap along the bottom. And if you're watching over on TikTok, make sure you tap and tap and tap the screen. If you see right up here on TikTok, if you're watching anyway, the uh, if we get to 500,000 taps, I'll give away a free gift, whether it's a sweater or a hat. We'll use a spinny wheel and we'll spin it around and see what happens. So keep tapping. The more and more and the more you tap, the more a random person is going to get a free gift. From old paint with Josh. Now, once we get our clear onto our canvas, I don't want to go in and make a blue sky or anything. I want it to be this wood. And so, not being able to have any white on the piece of wood is going to cause some differences when we go to paint. And I'm going to show you how we're going to interact with that. Normally, we would have a bit of black gesso, right? Allow it to dry, put the clear on, and then put under color on there so when we went across it with white, it would show through. In this case, or on a blue sky, right? Or a white canvas, we'd put blue and white all over it so it would intermix. But in this case, our colors are gonna remain very dark. So we're gonna have to do a little bit more mixing on our palette than normal. No big deal, right? So, once we get in here, we take our one piece of paper towel. We don't even need more than that. I use the Viva brand. And some pieces of wood are more rough than others are. This one's very smooth. Very smooth, right? We come across it like that. Boom, boom, boom. Taking off the excess clear that we don't need. And now, instead of painting a, a sky or something like that, you would normally think, okay, let's cover it in blue or sunset-y colors or whatever. We're literally going to come into our white paint 
pull it down like this. Now this white paint's got a little touch of blue from the last painting that we did into it, so it's actually gonna look really neat. And I'm gonna show you something cool. Say we came down, you know what? Let's go down this way, we'll pop up like this. Pow, right up into the wood. Just how you like me now, Pooh! Pow, way up into the sky. Fantastic. All right, now remember, there's nothing, there's no color for this to mix down on, so let me show you a little secret. What if we took just a little squeeb, a little bit of blue, a little touch of black. I'm talking about the smallest bit you've ever seen. All right, we're gonna come up underneath these guys and just drop a little section in there, just a little bit that that white color can then blend down over the top of. Check this out right here, right? Make a big old mess. Come in with our brush, start to work the light color down over the darkness, really work in that dark color that's underneath, and then very lightly come in and pull our light down over the top. Right, and make this soft little shadowy little puffly little cloud back there. Right, the more you work into it, the more and more it'll kind of go faded into this little, uh, like a shadowy mix. Come up here, push a little harder if you want it to grow a little bit more. Push a little harder if you want it to blend. Be a little softer if you want it to be very, very, very white like that. And you get this soft little puff of cloud with a little shadowy base at the bottom. Super easy. Now let's wipe off our brush, get all that dark paint off. Come back in with some white, and then let's go up into that colored area right here. So then these white clouds are gonna stand out as being super bright against all the other clouds back there because we didn't mix them with anything. All right, we come back in with that same brush, dab it off onto a paper towel. Let's grab it up from this side and we'll start to pull it down. Pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Now I'm gonna put one more giant dark cloud underneath this guy so we have some bit of mist that we can play with later on. And it all makes sense. If you just hang with me, right? The more we mix it down, you get this crazy looking little cloud back in there. Almost looks like it's got a piece of sky right back underneath this little bit of cloud and in front or behind these little bits of cloud back there. Very cool. Now, let's come in and mix up a giant old mountain, right? Not every painting has got to have a blue sky or a sunset sky. We can leave it all wooden like this. But if we're going to come in and paint a giant old mountain, what three colors are we going to mix up? In order to paint said giant mountain, we need to make a really deep, dark color that I like to call paint with Josh black. No, not the, not the black like you're thinking of. <laughs> purple black, right? Very deep, dark, purplish, blackish color. We mix up these three colors. Do you know what they are? I'll give you some shout outs if you know what they are. Let's see, Loretta knows, Angie's Crafts knows, Red Wing knows, of course. Hello, Fabian Betonio. I bet you Clint knows. Let's see, blue, black, and crimson. Of course, you guys all know the answer. You all know it. You all know it to be true. Now let's come up here and we'll grab a bit of that darkness. And once we scrape it up, stick it to the camera lenses over here. And maybe let's start our mountain onto this side. Let's come down this big old thing. Now, my favorite part about painting on wood is that the wood grips the paint in different ways than the canvas might. You know what I mean? Doesn't have to be the craziest, sharpest mountaintop either. You can see just how those wood little pieces are kind of gripping onto everything. We're gonna pull this down this way, sliding it down. You can see it doesn't get any brighter. Normally when we're on a white canvas, it's becoming brighter and brighter and brighter as it mixes in with that lighter color. And on this wood, we don't have that brightness. So let's kind of scrape up some of that deep, dark color, only really allowing the tip top to be very deep and dark. All right, come down here. We'll streak this guy over here. We can even use the same paint, literally scrape it up. Come down and make some more mountain over here if you wanted to, you know what I mean? Totally up to you. All we're worried about is what that top line, <clears throat> excuse me, that what that top line looks like right there. As long as you got a nice crisp top line, you're gonna have a wicked cool looking mountain. Now, let's come in, even with all the white that's on our brush underneath here, and let's grab our mountain up. Let's slide it down. We always talk about the three P's of paint with Josh, right? The amount of paint that we put on the canvas, our amount of pressure that we then pull on this paint with, right? The farther we pull it down, the more it's going to slide. The more pressure you give it, the longer it's going to have a little streak down the edge, right? What if this guy came looking this way and he was streaking it down, coming off the other side? You can always go back, grab a little bit more paint, right? Throw on another little ridge. Keeps it nice and dark so we can have some real deep, dark shadows in these little mountains back in here. Pulling down one way, pulling down the other way. Maybe this guy was a very straight up little sheer cliff back there and you had that whole big guy slide down in front of it. You never know until you do it, so go try something. 
Go see what it looks like when you do this or when you do that. Come out here, slide this guy out all the way down. What's our mountain going to look like? All up to us. Where are we going to deposit that paint? You can already see it starting to dry over here. <laughs> Man, this thing dries fast on the wood, let me tell you. So, let's come up here. Remember, we're all going to go check out the Glitterwick stream right after this over on TikTok. So if you're on TikTok, if you're watching over there, Check out Glitter Wicks, W-I-C-K-S, Glitter Wicks, like a candle wick, right? And they pour the most amazing, fanciest candles you've ever done did seen right live in front of your eyeballs. I think she might be pouring my order tonight, so I'm excited. A little bit of that white, a little bit of our blue as we come down here and we mix in just that little squeeb of the blue that we created, not our deep, darkest blue. We need to save that. And we don't want our white paint, our white snow here to be as pure white being very, very, very far away. We don't need that to happen. Now, let's come in to decide which way is our light going to hit on this little mountain. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, we had all of our snowy bits coming off the back. And look at how it drags down off of this wood and picks up in different areas because the wood grain kind of tells us what it wants our little mountain to look like. And to me, it starts to look like a little pyramid, a little, like, stacked Little bits as they go up and down, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, we'll come over here with a bit of white. Come off the edge of this guy. Maybe he was really straight down up here at the top. Very lightly touching. Then we hit, bang, a little bit more pressure. Slide it down the other way, right? The wood is going to have it grab so much differently than the canvas is. Remember to leave some deep, dark areas. You can't let everything be as bright as you want it to be. Right? You can't have the... It starts to look really cool. I know. I Trust me. I know. It starts to look neat. And then you end up doing too much. And you're like, oh, I should have stopped back then when I was at this point. I could have done this. I could have done that. And I just kept going. And now it looks like this. You know what I mean? I've been there. I've been there, guys. Trust me. A little bit of our white. Go back to our blue. If you always got enough section or if you got enough room behind your white, throw some blue in there. Don't just leave it as the dark color. Because it really adds a lot of depth into our places where we need that bit of difference, right? Not everything is going to always be exactly the same. Maybe you had this whole big blue ridge coming down underneath because you had that shadow down underneath all that white. You never know what it's going to look like until you do it. So that's why I'm always telling you guys, get out there, try something crazy. Whip it down. Look at those cool little things. It's like hidden pyramids in, our, in Antarctica, man. I can't get over this one and how much I dig it. Throw some white back in here. It's twinkle down wherever we want it to be. That's where it's going to be. Grab this guy. Streak it over here. What do you want your mountain to look like? I always ask you because it doesn't have to look like mine. Right? It doesn't have to be this exact. It doesn't have to do anything. Holy cow. I think we just got an order, you guys. I just looked back and I think we just got an order. I'm going to zoom you guys in on YouTube just a, just a touch so you can see some of these details being created. All the other cameras look pretty close. I think Melanie just came in and bought this painting, you guys. <laughs> or this clock, anyway. Or maybe another one. But in any case, I did get an order. So that means we'll be back later on tonight. And I've got a cool idea for later as well. Okay, going to take a bit of our blue, drag it down, and a bit of our white, right, in our white areas, and drag that area down. So we've got a bit of foamy, uh, foggy mist that we can create. Now, that's too much white. Scrape that guy off. That's the best part about the wood, too. You can literally scrape it up, drop it down again, scrape it up over here, drop it down over here, make some misty fogginess out of it over here. You never know! So, drop it out there. And now, with our two-inch brush, here's my most favoritist part, okay? We're going to come in here, we're going to soften all of these details. Not so much with our brush, not so much pressure that we're smushing it or dragging all the paint or getting rid of all of the details, right? We're just going over it and softening it the smallest bit. Just the couple hairs and some air, seriously. Depends on the thickness of your mountain and everything else. But however you came down with your snow, so say we came down this way with our palette knife, you need to go up that way with your brush. Opposite, say we came down this way, you need to go up this way with your brush, right? All the things to know and find out. Over here, swipe, 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 swipe. Now, Josh. What about all this crap that you left around the bottom? That looks ridiculous. I agree, but it's needed. So when we come in with our brush and we start smacking at all that white, it interchanges and mixes with all of the blue 
the gray, the deep, dark, mountainous color, and you start grabbing it up and tapping it down in the direction that you want your mountain to flow down. So it's just like a clock. Imagine that, right? That's why we're painting clocks, because it's just like a clock. You go around the side. Now, as we come down to the point of our mountain, we're getting further and further vertical, right? So we can end up turning and then going this way. You don't need to do it a whole lot. It's just right at the point. But your, your brush is going to go like this, and it's going to turn vertical, and then we're going to come over here. And by the time we're over here, we're going to be going like this straight over to the side, right? Each time, tapping in with just the corner. I'm trying to get my hand out of the way. Tap it in. Tap it in. Tap it in. Not the whole brush. I'm not trying to smack the whole two inches against the thing. Just the corner. It's easier to show you over here. Just a little tap, 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 tap. Just the corner. Tap, 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 tap. Right? We haven't even used the bottom of the brush yet. Just the corner, guys. Come on. Down here like this. Grab it up. Pull it out. Grab it up and we pull it down. It goes up, it goes down, it goes over here. All right, watch this. You can even go above your mountain horizon. And then it starts to look like a misty bit of cloud rolling its way down through here. Now, we don't need to make the entire bit all white, right? We just want to have a bit of mistiness that's come down and up and down and up and down all the way around the mountain. So it's not just a straight deal. Okay, we come back in with one final little swipe in each direction, just like a clock, since we're painting a clock. Boom, boom, boom. Softens the mist into your snowy transition right here. Very neat. Now watch this, what if we had this guy come up just a little bit higher in the mist? We're pulling it down in the way that we want our mountain to go. So now our mist has another little hump, a little bit of mystery that's happening back there. I wonder why they call it mist, Josh. Oh, well, that's because it's mysterious. It's a mysterious deal. Okay, now let's come in and paint a couple, just a couple million trees. How about we paint a couple million trees on this thing in just about one minute? Are you guys ready to see it? First things first, you gotta let me know. Ah, where are you watching from? What's your favorite sandwich? Mm. Melanie, did you buy this one or did you buy a, a different one? I couldn't tell because I all my three of my devices are rocking and rolling. But let me know. We're gonna go and we're gonna grab one of my favoritest brushes to make trees out of, right? Now, the only reason it's one of my favorite brushes to make trees out of is because it's so beat to death that it's just like, it's not even a straight like arc anymore. It's just a weird old fan brush. But for whatever reason, when we do these little million trees in the background, it does the best ones. I, I can't figure it out. Might just be worn in just perfectly enough, right? Now, say we came over here and we started tapping in little teeny tiny bits. And they start working down. And every so often we come up, try to leave a sharp point. Come up and come down, just like a little heart monitor. Come up, ooh, real high up there. Into the mist, lower down here where you have that fogginess. You don't have to go everywhere, guys. Not every bit's gotta be the same amount of height or the same amount of darkness or go down as far as the rest. Not everything is the same, don't worry about it. Come back in here. Do a little bit more paint onto our brush, wiggle it down, stretch it out. It basically flattens out the bristles and fills them full of paint. So you can come back in and make sharper, darker trees, right? The more that you hit it, the more that you're gonna intermix with the white, causing it to become a lighter and lighter and lighter color. And so if you come back in with that darker tree and it contrasts, right? Pushes that mountain way off into the distance, a million, well, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred feet off into the distance. Or, I mean, I mean, it could be a long way. There could be a million trees here. I don't want you guys to take the time to stop and count them. I mean, don't do that. That's, that would be, you know, I mean, don't, don't, don't call me out or anything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you wanted to count them, you could push pause and count them all. But imagine there's lots of depth between this mountain and those little bunches of trees, especially when you come in with this brush. Now, with our two inch brush, I get the comment all the time. The trees look better like that before he does the swiping. But just imagine if you had all this texture way off in the distance, and then again, the same amount of texture as our foreground trees, they're not gonna stand out. They're not gonna stand away from each other. So we give it a little bit of pressure, and we pull it away at the top, and that will drag up as many bristles that are on your brush worth of little teeny tiny tree trunk tip tops that are sticking out the top and that are uncovered with branches, right? So you get these really little spiky guys every so often and it adds a ton of depth into all of our trees. It makes it look like there's many, many, many more than we just painted, right? Way back in that little forest, thousands and thousands and thousands of trees, right? Now, 
Before we do anything crazy, let's come in with a bit of white because actually we can use that snowy color that we mixed up for our, our mountain. It's just about white enough. And I wanna add this in because we're painting on the wood. There's no liquid white underneath to help brighten these up as we smash them down, right? So as we come over here and we get a little bit of that brightness up into it, just all nasty, because what is fog? It's just a bunch of nasty cloud down on the bottom of the ground, right? Now we're gonna come in here and instead of tapping out around like a clock, like we did with our mountain all the way around, tap, 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 tap. And then we swept up, right? In this instance, we're gonna go straight down, just like a typewriter. So we're gonna come in and dab it and go down and then come up next to it, four, five, six taps. Boom, sometimes we go a little bit lower, we tap down here. Then let's pop up a little bit higher and we'll tap into this guy, right? Sort of however you lay your foggy mist into it is how it's gonna be easiest to do. We'll come back and tap, 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 tap. You can bring it up. You can take some of your tree color and bring it down and kind of spread it back and forth. So you get a bit of darkness back in there. And we're gonna come back and mix it into this whole cloud anyway, just like this guy. So don't worry about it being quote unquote perfect, right? Just as long as it looks better than that. <laughs> Anything in between this and that, and you're good, right? Again, come in, tap, 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 tap. Just down, 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 down. Now, if we were on a white canvas and we had to use our liquid white to keep our canvas uh, wet, then each time that we tapped on these, they would be mixing with the white underneath. But in our case, in this instance, there is no white underneath because we're on that piece of wood. And so we have to add our white if we want it to brighten itself up. Now, that's the best part about the mist and the mysteriousness is where are the base of these trees now? You know what I mean? Where is the bottom? Is it back here? Is it all the way down here? Is it way down here? How far down do your tree bottoms go? You get to decide with that amount of mist, right? And then you get to come in and let's say we threw like a little, I don't know, like a little bit of a uh, little snow, a little snowy hill back there, right? Just fantastic. All right, we're gonna come in with our white right onto our brush. And let's say off here, very light touching so we don't drop a whole lot of, of color yet. And then the more we go over here, the more pressure, which means we're gonna drop more paint, which means it's gonna get brighter as it comes towards us, okay? Now, the majority of the paint is off of the brush. We can start to soften it all the way back, all the way back. Light little things, right? This guy, you can literally take and sweep up into the trees. We have a little hill out here now. The whole thing, the majority of it anyway, is gonna be covered by trees. So you don't have to paint too much mist or too much snow or too much of anything, really. Come back in if you got too much up into your trees, just like that, work on that, right? We're gonna put a tree here, we're gonna put a tree there. Everything that's, gonna, that's out there is gonna be covered, so don't worry about it. You put on too much white, it's gonna make our trees too hard to deal with. But we do want our tree, our white, to get brighter and brighter and brighter as it comes down this way towards us, especially we're gonna be able to see it a bit better, right? Now, angles are most important, of course. You don't want it to be this crazy slope down, you know, 45 degree angle thing. That's not what we're trying to get. Okay, now we're gonna come back and we need to mix up a lot more of our deep dark color, guys. So what are those three deep dark colors that we like to mix in order to make Paint With Josh Madness mix? The Madness Mixture. The Madness Mix. I wonder if Clint is watching. He said he's in bit. He's like, if you could say my name in your TikTok, that'd be awesome. And then I forget his screen name. <laughs> oh. Sorry, Clint, I got a bad memory. I'm gonna adjust the uh, YouTube cam just a little bit. We gotta come down just a touch so we can see the whole thing. There we go. Fantastic. Now, guys, you gotta help me out. Did Melanie buy this one or did she get a different one? Did she get, I know she got something. I just don't know what it is. And I can't check because all of my devices are rocking and rolling. So you guys let me know what three colors do we mix up in order to create a deep, dark, super dark, purpley black color. Plaque, as we say, not in the teeth, but like purple black. Uh oh, so you got this one, Melanie. Perfect. So Melanie's gonna need your guys' name, uh, need your guys' help to come up with a name for this painting the closer we get towards finishing it. And CBB, that works too. Or BBC. <laughs> Blue, black, and crimson. Right? And those colors 
will make this really dark color, just like back here. But we know we've already softened this guy. We've mixed in some white. We've dabbed at him. So these trees, being the same color but a little darker hue, are going to stand out much closer. Not only being darker, but why? Can you tell me why this tree might look just a tad closer than those trees in the background? What makes this guy back here stand out as being closer? Right? What, 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 what about him makes him the biggest, closest thing so far that we painted? I right? can't really say the color because it is the same color as the other trees off in the background, right? It's the same. So what makes him stand out? He's taller than those trees and lower. That's exactly right. That mist, maybe the snow, where his little butt sits. That makes it definitely sick, uh, look a lot closer, right? The mist. The mistiness. Now, let's see. All of our shadows are off onto this side so we can take more of him and slide him away. And that dark color from his own tree will provide his own shadow going off in the distance, right? Now, this guy, very little, teeny tiny touches. And you can see we worked a little bit higher down to a lower point and a little bit higher down to a lower point. So the tree looks more 3D already. Right? And then you can go back in and add your snowy highlights and different stuff. Like say we wanted to add a bit of white onto this side just to brighten it up. So that side's in the, the light and the other side's in the shadow. All you got to do, little simple things. Simple, simple little things, right? You can come back in here with that same blue that's back on our mountain and launch some of that off into the shadowy side as well. And it just makes for a really cool little color contrast, little change as you go back in, right? Now, let's come back to a little bit more of this big, thick, dark paint over here. And as we mix it down and wiggle it down like that, I want to come down right next to our mountain top, like right up here, all the way down. Now, what's going to make this guy stand out as being in front of said mountain or the other trees or anything else? What makes him stand out as being in front Boom, 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 boom. Drop down that thick paint. Super dark color. All right. The more we go down, the more we kind of smack from the center and go outwards and outwards and outwards, creating our branches as we go down. Right. And then from the same thing from this side, we're pushing out in that direction to create the tree as its branches go down. Boom, 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 boom. How far do you want them to sit? Depends on how far it comes down and sits in the front. Right. All up to us. And we know we need to pull it down a little bit further because we have to have an area to grab it and stretch it out. And we'll pull it out this way, and maybe we'll just see the light side of that part of the tree. But because we pulled it down at this angle, especially with the angle of the clock, it makes it look more 3D automatically, right? But what makes him stand out? The detail, right? There's a little bit more texture. I mean, at least it looks that way because of all my lights. Right? If I tried to put some shadow on there, he would look just like his old buddy in the background, right? Now, again, we want to come in and let's grab a bit of our white. And if we can have the white just be a little bit brighter against that blue, right? Boom, oh, just a little touch brighter against the blue. It's going to help. And I don't like it to ever be such a straight line. Boom, 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 boom. It's going to help that shadow play even nicer off of that thing, right? Now, we'll come in a little bit more white onto this brush. Slide it down. Grab up some more, slide it down again. All right, when you're going over this dark color, it tends to go away pretty quickly. Be careful. Working it down, working it down. This snow is a little bit brighter, and then it goes back to a little darker, a little darker as it fades away, back into the distance. You're going to see more details up here in the front, in my mind anyway, than anything off further in the distance. Now, let's take this guy. We're going to swipe him up into the trees very lightly so you can see some of those little things kind of shoot up underneath the tree branches a little skirt down there where the where the tree skirt is for Christmas time go right down in there like that fantastic now I think we need to mix up a little bit more dark color if we're going to make up the last and final probably one tree right over here maybe two probably just one we'll see how much room we got and then we can go back and highlight all these gorgeous little things right so mixing up those three favorite colors that we like to use all the time. What are those three color mix? The mix that never can go without being used. 
<coughs> what is that three color mix gonna gonna be called, you guys? The BBC. Blue, black, and crimson. Not the British Broadcast Channel. But blue, black, and crimson. That's right. It makes a very deep, dark, purpley paint. Now, what if we came back and we had a guy... Let's put two. We could put two. I mean, we could. We could do whatever we wanted. We could have this guy just be a little baby guy off the back. Keep him in the shadows of the... In the mist of that guy over there. Right? Bing, bang, boom. Now he's got a little friend. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that. Bingo, bango. I want these guys to be nice and thick and dark. As dark as they can be. Now he's got a little little buddy hanging out behind him over there, right? Okay, let's come in with a little bit more paint on the brush. We'll come off to this side a little bit higher. This has got to be the highest thing in our scene because it's the most foreground thing in our scene. Notice that we're not painting the whole back back here because you don't need to. We're going to pull it out just like we covered all this area. That's what we're going to do underneath here so you don't have to cover everything back there. Now, one more little tree right up here. A couple little tip taps. And the more we go down, the more we start to push harder and harder on the tree, extending the brush out, right? Pushing it on either side, bouncing it back and forth, letting our branches come out thicker and thicker and thicker. Now, once you get to a point, you don't want to be humongous down around the base of the tree. Right? We'll come out and do this side. Boom, boom, boom. So I like to come out at least one, maybe one and a half bits on our very closest foreground tree. It makes them look humongous. Just ginormous. Now, we got to go back and fill in this open door back here, right? Come back, slap it in, away from the tree, away from the tree, away from the tree, away from the trunk. Boom, 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 boom. Just about as thick on both sides. Look at that, guys. Fantastic how that happens, right? The more we go down, the more it's going to look like it's in the front. And remember, we got to leave enough room to pull some color out back here, right? This guy, we might want to streak just a little further. Oh, that's going to be money right there. Just a little further. Zip right over there. Now, once we start to pull this guy out, then we're going to have some sweet little action in here, okay? Now, we're going to take this guy, we're going to slide him out in the other direction. That's all you got to do. Start to take some of his darkness. Our canvas is very dry down here. Take some of our darkness out, pulling it down this way, sliding it out that way. A lot harder to do on a on a dry piece of wood versus a wet piece of wood, that's for sure. Down over there, just a little difference. You want to have a little ridge going one way, a little ridge going the other way? Totally up to you. And back here, I'm going to fill in that last piece of fog right behind our tree. Right back there. Right? And then we'll come back over it and add these thick branches because you got to have all that thick texture. You don't want to, you don't want to skimp out on the texture, guys. That's not good. you got to have all that thick texture action action news in there man dude what if we did just a little just a little guy right here just a little guy right there bang stop it just a little sticky tree right there right come down far enough so that we can take him and slide him out make him part of our little scene back here how far how much we're gonna put on there how much pressure we're pulling on it right now because we added that dark bit into our snow it's changed the color so we got to go back we got to work the color in again. You can even leave little longer streaks, little snow drifts, little things, whatever you want. Swipe back up into the trees. Makes it look a lot more realistic when you do it that way. To me, anyway. Just to me. Very cool. Now, that's a neat looking little scene, guys. What if we came back with our Paint with Bram liner brush? I got that really long Paint with Bram liner brush, and I like using the Meaden Lamp Black paint for the tree branches, right? Coconut, what are you doing up here? You crazy doggy. You always come up here for the loves from all the fans. You're just like, oh, the fans need to see me. Trust me, girl, they don't. They're here to see me paint. They're not here to see you be a dog. And they probably are, actually. They're probably more here to see you than me. Crazy long little streaky bit of a tree up here, right? Now, off of this little guy, we're gonna start throwing all these little crazy branches, little bits as they shoot out over here. Over there, all sorts of things happening. And with this long liner brush and that mead and lamp black paint and the odorless mineral spirits that we clean our brushes with, these branches will go for miles. They'll go for light years because it's the paint with Bram liner brush. It's 97 light years long. It's immense. 
We all thought Bram was crazy when he brought this brush out, man. We're like, what are you doing with this? No one is going to be able to use this. <laughs> and it turns out to be the best brush we've all ever used. It's fantastic. Just fantastic. So, let's come over here. Let's do this. Let's do that. And let's put a little bit of our white. Just a little touch of white. We're going to come off of our trunk. We're just going to touch it and move up. And touch it and move up. And touch it and move up and up. And not trying to cover every single bit of it out there, guys. You don't want to cover every piece. All right? And then we're going to tap at it until... It looks like little bits of bark out there. So we just tap, 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 tap until it starts to dull itself down with that darkness. Not every bit has to be the same. Right, I'm trying to put it on the left side of our little trunk, if anything. Not every piece has to be just as lit up. That looks perfect, right? Not every bit's got to be exactly the same thing. Let's come back in here, little touch, wherever we can get it to stick on. All right, you don't need it up there in the mountains. We need it out here on this guy. Little touch, little touch, little baby things. Not trying to light up every little bit, just the littlest thing out there. And you get these branches that'll just stand out, and those little bits of light will kind of take your eye up towards the rest of the branch. It's very cool. All right, let's take that same bit of white, let's come back in here, and let's add just a couple little indications of a tree trunk way the heck buried in these trees back here. This guy's on a little leaner. He's a little leaner back there. All right, this guy over here, very lightly touching. Whatever comes off, comes off. We don't need it to be humongous. We're not trying to show the entire thing. Like, that's probably even too big right there. I'll have to go back and scrape that out. Just a little bit, right? So, if you ever make it too big, go across it from the other direction. You can literally scrape it away and scrape it away and bring it down to whatever thickness you want it to be. All right? Now, since we have that dark color back on the brush and I want it all to be the same amount of texture, I'm going to go back around bit of our trunk like that and just like so that's going to give us a nice little line to follow down now you don't have to have it in the same place on every tree it doesn't have to be showing on every tree not everything all has to be exactly the same i'm only putting it there to show you one single thing are you ready are you ready to learn the secret to paint with josh's trees are you ready because i'm going to tell you whoever's here is going to get to know the almighty secret to paint with Josh's trees. And you guys are going to have to start coming up with a name for Melanie on this one because it's just about done, guys. I might put in one little bush down here in the front, I'm thinking. Do we have enough paint? Do we have enough paint? Of course we have enough paint. We've always got enough paint. Another little bush. Fantastic. Come in here. All that thick painting. I'm going to come get some from over here, too. Just grab it all. The black, the crimson, the blue. I'm gonna intermix all onto our brush anyway, be nice and thick, and then maybe we come out here and we pop in this little crazy thing, all jagged looking, right? You don't want it to be just this perfect shape. That's gonna look kind of funky. I like me, uh, mine being a little bit higher, a little bit lower, a little here, a little there. Maybe we'll pull some down over here because the more that it goes down, the more we'll be able to slide it out, right? Now we got this monster bush back in here that we can take, slide out this way. And the more you go back, you get that angle, the more it's going to help it look like we're wrapping around. We're going to slide our little snowy bits back up into our bushes, right? And then fix our little things down here. And all of a sudden, you got a really cool little scene, guys. Pull this guy back over here just enough. And make it look like we can wrap right around this little sucker. Just fantastic. Who's got the quads? <laughs> Whipping around the side of this little thing. Just excellent. Now, the best part about painting on wood is when you scrape it away, you'll literally have little wood-colored sticks in there. Just perfect. Now, we're gonna come back with our final brush, for the bushes anyway, grab a little bit of our liquid white, and we're gonna go into our phthalo blue. Remember, guys, right after this show at eight o'clock, over on Glitterwix on TikTok, they're gonna be pouring the most amazing-looking candles you ever done did seen. So, get your butts over there, and check them out, give them a follow, and all the good stuff. Now that we put in a little touch of blue on the bottom, we're gonna come back in with the liquid white on the other side of the brush like that, come up into our liquid white, our titanium white pile. So you get that big old goopy globbiness. And let's just say we had a couple little bits, caught some light out here on the edge, right? Little things, the majority of it was mostly in, it would mostly be in shadow unless we got a piece of light from over here. Pop, 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 pop,
Not trying to fill it all up, right? Just trying to have it be icy cold and frozen out there. Just an ice cold frozen little deal. Put some of that blue back up into our little shadowy snow and all of a sudden you can create however you want it to look. We put a little ridge down on this side with some more bright snow. Right? All up to us, you guys. Swipe it up over the ridge, down the other side, very lightly. Very neat. What do you want yours to look like, right? All up to us. Bing, bang, boom. Take this guy. We can make him as small. You can make him as big. You can do whatever you want to do. Oh, fantastic. All right, now. Let's come back. We have to get the secret to paint with Josh brushes, and I gotta tell you guys what it is, apparently, because you guys don't know the secret yet. So, I'm gonna tell you the secret to paint with Josh brushes, but you gotta let me clean off. No, sorry, not paint with Josh brushes. Paint with Josh trees. But you gotta let me clean off my brushes. Is what I meant to say. And that way, you just hang out. You can tell me where you're watching from, and just how cold it is tonight where you are. And by the time I get done, we'll all be ready to go. Remember, you're gonna have to help Melanie come up with a name for this painted clock because since she purchased it, she gets to choose the name, so she might need help from you guys. So as we start getting closer to finishing, start typing in names that she might wanna use to name this painting. And we got like three more brushes left to clean after this one. Bingo, bango, over here, over there. Over sha, over da, like this, like that. Right. What a mess these clocks make, guys. We leave a lot of dark color in these brushes, let me tell you. Lots of dark color. Did I even clean this brush? <laughs> Or am I just dabbing it without cleaning? Oh yeah, I cleaned it. It's just dirty. All right. It's probably time to get rid of that brush. All right, two more brushes, guys, and then we'll be all set to go. So tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite brush to use? Let me know that question. What's your favorite brush? In the mints, mints below. What is your favorite brush to use? Now, well, I think after a little wipe down of the palette, we should be all set, guys. So let's clean this stuff up. Boom, boom, boom. So we got a nice clean area to work with. Some straight up colors. That way we're not tainting all of our colors together. Got that. Got that. Wipe it off with a paper towel and we'll be all set. So, where are you guys watching from? Is it cold? It's not actually too bad today in Vegas. It was pretty warm and, um, I mean, it rained, so the clouds kept all the, like, the, the what little heat there was, kept it in. But, um, what the heck is that? A piece of tape or something? Man, I got stuff all over this palette. But it wasn't too bad temperature wise. So, were you freezing your butt off all day? Let me know. Now, the secret to old paint with Josh's trees is a very valuable secret, guys. Very, very valuable. If you want your trees to look just as amazing as my trees, you're going to need to make them with a big fat brush and then highlight them with a little baby brush. Little teeny baby. You can fit two, maybe three of these inside this big brush. And that way we can leave little baby details on our little baby trees. So, I'm going to use two of those little small little brushes, okay? I'm going to use one of them to fill it with our blue color. So our, our um, phthalo blue just right on the brush. Not a whole lot of liquid white because I don't want it all to be super bright. I want the deep dark blue to stay pretty dark. All right, that way we'll get all these little interactions of color when we go to use our highlights and stuff. It's going to be really fun. Really fun. All of a sudden it changed just a little. Just a little into this deeper, darker blue. But the more that we go, it's going to help us off the backside, these little blue bits. 
Not every piece has to be covered. You don't want them every single wear. Right? Just little blue little things out there in the color, in the paint, waiting to erupt into color. Over here like this. Boom, 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 boom. A couple little blue taps. Now, I'm going to wash that brush off. Put that old sucker away. And then, I'm going to bring out the white one. Now, we're going to add liquid white to just a little touch of that blue. Little touch. Now, as we go back in, right, we want it to be a bit brighter than our darker blue. So, we'll get a little bit more of our liquid white. Just smallest little bits at a time. You don't want it to be too much on the brush. Is that bristle? Oh, it's just long. Now, we're going to come in with our liquid white and our little bit of blue. And we're going to pop these guys just ever so lightly. We don't need a lot of pressure, just so small, such little bits, and then we'll have that deep darkness, we'll have those real deep dark blue areas, and then we'll have these little bits of high lit shadowy snow off the back of our trees, right? Now, all you gotta do is allow it to work its way in and not overdo everything. You don't want to over cover it. And you can see that the brush gets very dirty, right? Where you contact that darkness, it starts to pick it up. So we can use this side of the clean brush Come off of this big old dude, right? And off of this back side. We'll come like that, tapping little teeny tiny things, right? Not too many where the where the um, the snow of the mountain is pretty much exactly the same color. Right? We're coming in like that, tapping over here, tapping over there. Little baby bits. Here, there, everywhere. Just about halfway. Sometimes you can over go into your your highlight side and then you just go back with your highlights and cover over a little less, right? Come off of this guy, small little baby taps. Little baby taps. Now, his base, his buddy over here is much taller, so he's going to be covering pretty much the majority of his tree back in shadows. So all we need is a couple little dark blue bits back here, right, that are going to indicate that that tree in the background is all shadows. And you might not even see it. Once we put our big highlights on, your brain might not even look at it. So, let's wash that brush off. Let's come back in here. A little bit of our liquid white. Now let's go into our titanium white. And you're thinking, Josh, what about that tree off in the distance? I know, we're gonna get to him. We'll, we'll deal with him. Come up here with our liquid white and titanium white. If it doesn't uh, touch with the, or come off your brush with the smallest little touch, then you don't have the right ratio, right? It should come off with minimal effort off of your brush. Right? Little teeny tiny taps. Now, each time we do it, our brush is starting to contact the darkness and starting to change each time. So let's rotate the brush around. A couple more little taps. Build our little branches out. Not just randomly, right? We're coming out. We're going back in. We're coming out. We're going back in. We're coming out. We're going back in. Bingo, bango. Look, <laughs> just like that. I mean, seriously, guys. I'm going to come back and fill in a couple more little places like that. But Seriously, go out, go in, back and forth, out to the edge, over here, maybe a couple times over our back of our little trees back here, right, in our shadowy area. It makes it look like the light's trying to wrap its way around the tree. Very cool. Very, very cool, guys. Now, let's go highlight this other sucker. We'll get a little bit more of our liquid white, right, onto our brush, back over to here, into our titanium white. Now, since we got a little of our dark gray color in here it's already a darker white than this guy so we can use this on our tree back here very lightly touching the smallest little things building out our little branches all right the more that you touch and cover the more you're gonna lose that depth right little things now with the same side of the brush that's already contacted the darker side and had that dark paint on it you can go across just slightly into your shadows don't want to overdo and light up everything. Leave those deep, dark areas in there, guys. Now, why do we leave the deep darkness? I'm going to explain to you. It's the same reason why I put that trunk right in the center of the tree. Okay? Now, let's say you're out there for whatever reason. you got the dog out there, and you're running through, and you're throwing the Frisbee, and you throw it, and it goes right into the tree. You're like, ah, the dog's like sitting right here. You can't get the Frisbee out the tree, so you got to stomp over there. And get the frisbee right you're just going to run up and shove your hand right into all these little spiky bristles of all the tree or are you going to look for a place where you can like reach underneath ah and get in and get your frisbee out right that's what i would do i don't know about you guys but i'm not just going to run up and poke myself with all these little spiny little branches okay i'm going to look for the dark spots 
where I can stick my hand in between all those little branches and come out with my Frisbee. So I hope that helps in thinking about leaving those dark areas in there, right? If you cover up all the dark spaces, first your tree is gonna look flat because you're gonna have no depth. It's just gonna be this messy blob of a, a thing, right? And no one likes that. No one likes a big old flat butt of a tree. Okay, <laughs> gonna come out, gonna make more of our branches. Coming over here, hopping it down, back and forth, zigzagging, 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 tapping, back and forth again bringing it over, got a little dark area, so now let's switch back. But if I'm gonna switch from all that darkness that was just contacting the brush over to the, the clean side, boy oh boy, you gotta be careful. Get out onto the edge of your tree and maybe just deposit a few little bits before you go down into this area, because it'll be very bright. All right now, we're gonna come into our shadows, just a couple taps, randomly. Oh, I'm gonna need a little bit more, there we go. A couple little bits, makes it look like our our light's trying to wrap its way around the gorgeous shadowy side. Boom, boom, boom. A couple little bits, not trying to cover every single thing, right? Now you can reach your way inside of that tree and pull your Frisbee out, dude. You couldn't do it before. Don't tell me you could. I know you couldn't. Not like that. Chip tap, chip chat. Bingo, bango. That's a fantastic scene, guys. Now, come up with a name for this one. What are we gonna call it? And we gotta get Melanie her free spin. And then we gotta put this clock together. Now, I've done enough of these clocks that it shouldn't be too hard to do the clock part. So, let's get the old spinny winny wheel out. This spinny winny wheel hasn't had a spin in like five paintings. So, both him and I are very grateful to get to be able to spin today. So, Melanie, are we gonna be able to keep, are we gonna keep the spinny winny wheel or are we going to gift it away to somebody in the comments or whoever. You gotta let me know. In the mist, the mist of time, not midst, the mist. Shout out to a cruel fool. Excellent, excellent. All right, are you gonna keep it, Melanie? Are you gonna give it away? You gotta let me know. Try to back you guys up a little bit. Let's see. Melanie says keep it. All right, here we go, guys. We're gonna spin whatever she lands on is what she wins. There we go. Look at how freely that thing spins now. Oh no! Paint with Josh wins. That means that you lose. All right, I'll give you one, one more time because it's been a long time since Melanie's been around. One more free spin. A free spin on Josh. What are we gonna get? The grand prize, probably? Hey, a Glitterwix candle! All right, so Melanie's going home with a Glitterwix candle of her choice. Now, Melanie, you gotta get a hold of London uh, from Glitterwix and she'll give you a discount code to use at checkout and then that will get you the free candle and the free shipping and get it over to you and then I'll go pay her for the candle. So, um, yeah, it's been awesome, guys. Now, I don't wanna take too long getting this thing all set up. So, let's take our clock out, all right? Now, the clock has about, well, depending on which one, it's got eight pieces. You get your one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. Little teeny tiny nuts on there. Smaller than your X's, man. So, let's come over here. Now, like I told you, this is already dry, and we're able to hold it while we take our clock right out. Now, we can strap it down because we don't want it to fall. But we're not going to be doing too many crazy things with it. Just like that, though. In the mist of time. I like that title, you guys. So, first things first, let's take our clock. We come in just like this. Little clock fixture, right? We're gonna remove the nut and the washer while keeping this plastic piece on the back of the clock, right? Oh, that's that? so tight right there. It's gonna be a pain in the butt. All right, now we're gonna remove our washer, leaving this little teeny tiny nut on the front of it. Set these guys down so you don't drop them. Lift, put it into the back, slides right through the hole that we drilled, and then that center piece of wood in our easel is what's holding our clock from falling back out, right? Now we can take our washer, come in here, load this guy up right there, and then over it with our nut. <laughs> Gotta have the nut. This is the bigger of the two nuts. See if we can get it up here. 
That's, that didn't sound good. Let's see if we can get it on here. Come on. There we go. Without contacting too much of our thick mountainous snow. Why do you got, I knew it was going to be a butt. I should have got a different one out of the bag. All right. It's, it's, just, it's trying to make me be late is what it is. And when you try to make me be late, it irritates me. So let's get up here. Get it on there. All right. Sometimes it helps to be able to feel it with your real hands, Josh. Get on there. There we go. All right. Cool. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, this guy, for whatever reason, he's got a little, like, somebody used some Loctite or something right on the end of it. And so we need to spin it like this a few times. Here, there, everywhere. Line it up in the center of your hole. And if you drill out a 3 8 hole, it's going to be just perfect. I think a quarter inch is too small. So, got a 3 8 hole, and then just tighten it until it's tight. That's all. I like these little channel locks because they're teeny tiny, they're easier to handle than our massive ones, right? And if you're going to accidentally scrape something away, it's going to be less than if you're using the bigger ones. There we go. Now that guy's in all the way. Our last piece is to take out this little teeny tiniest of nuts. The smallest little nut you've ever seen. Like I can't even show, it's, it's, it would fit on the end of my fingernail, it's so small. Now, come in with our hour hand. We remove the plastic bit. Get rid of that. It's got a compression fitting right here on the back of it, right? This little brass piece. And that goes over our white plastic part right here. So as you go to push it, you hold your clock in the back and you can feel it literally snap on and stay there with its pressure, okay? This little guy, much different. It's a minute hand. We go from an hour man to a minute man. Man, what happened? Age. Age happened. Now, this guy is not just a perfect circle. It's like a little rectangle that's rounded on the ends. So you got to find which side of your little clock is flat. And then attach our little guy just by pushing him on, just like that. Boom, boom, boom. Try not to bend the hands of the clock. Now, that's what that little nut is for. You come back with your little tiny nut right back in here. Everyone always seems to find that funny. It's like the size of your X is over here. Now, I like to hold my hour hand while I spin this little nut, just finger tight. Bang, just like so. Over here, make sure they're straight and that they'll freely flow, right? If we can spin them around and they flow around each other, then we know they'll be good. Now, the final piece, of course, is pow, pow, the second hand. Went from an hour man to a minute man to a second man. What the hell? Just kill me now. What are we doing? All right, over here, bingo, bango. We got our second hand on our clock. It's fantastic. And then we'll add our thing. And then we're all going to go over and watch Glitter Wicks. Literally right now, let me step in front of you guys real fast. Just because it's slightly easier to do it from this side. And while you're holding it, like this thing. There we go. Then it doesn't look like so much of a struggle. There we go. Now we've got a clicking, working hand. It's literally eight o'clock, so let's set it for eight o'clock. Then I'm gonna add the birds, then I'll sign it, and then we'll be all good. And we'll, we'll title it and stuff. So, about eight o'clock. There we go. Let's all get over to Glitterwix's stream, guys. And uh, this one turned out amazingly. So, for everybody over on YouTube, and Facebook. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you all for being here. I really can't wait to see your versions of the clock. If you have any questions on what size drill bit that you need to drill the center out, I'll send you a or I'll, I'll tell you if I can, I'll send you a photo. Send me a message, ask me, and I'll, I'm always down to help you guys. So, until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. Bah, bah, just crazy. Crazy. Let's do this.